Live now look there as well in Jerusalem. All right, well, earlier today I spoke with an official uh, at the IDF talking about these now competing narratives of what exactly happened in northern Gaza, what exactly happened when it came to this crowd crush at this humanitarian aid convoy. Uh, the Gaza-run health ministry there uh, said Israeli forces open fire indiscriminately on these Palestinian civilians, innocent ones at that, who just were clamoring for more aid. But the IDF strongly refutes that line, strongly refutes that account. Here's our interview. And here on Live Now from Fox, we always give you the latest developments and updates in the Israel-Hamas war, and including one today especially. I want to show some of this video put out by the IDF today. So, according to Reuters, Gaza Health Authority said that Israeli forces today shot dead more than 100 Palestinians as they waited for an aid delivery. Israel, though, challenging the death toll and said many of the victims were run over by aid trucks. Now, the IDF on Twitter put this out today. They said this, that this morning, humanitarian aid trucks entered northern Gaza. Residents surrounded the trucks and looted the supplies being delivered. As a result of the pushing, trampling, and being run over by the trucks, dozens of Gazans were killed and injured. Joining us now to discuss this even further is IDF Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, and he joins me from Israel. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Lerner, thanks so much for being with us here. I guess my first question to you is, you know, this happened in northern Gaza, uh, right on the outskirts of Gaza City. Were IDF forces shooting indiscriminately at this crowd of Palestinians trying to get aid, humanitarian aid that they so desperately need? Is that what was happening? Absolutely not. The IDF conducted a humanitarian convoy in order to bring the much needed uh, goods, the humanitarian supplies, the food, the medicine from the south into the north. It was a co coordinated effort. And indeed, some of our forces indeed accompanied in order to secure that convoy. Unfortunately, as you opened up and you quoted the Ministry of Health in Gaza, that's the Hamas Ministry of Health. They are citing these numbers. We wouldn't trust the Al-Qaeda Ministry of Health. We wouldn't trust the ISIS Ministry of Health. Why are we trusting anything the Hamas Ministry of Health says? So, of course, the operation, as we started in the early hours of this morning, um, before uh, at around 4 a.m., um, the convoy was able to go into northern Gaza. Um, as it pro proceeded, it indeed, as we saw in the footage, the masses of people that stormed the trucks in order to loot the goods, in order to take whatever they could get, um, it does absolutely exemplify precisely the dire conditions that people are in despair there but as we saw this happening we did fire some warning shots in order to try and disperse the crowd uh, but as that didn't happen that didn't work we retreated we took our forces our tanks back out of the area and regrouped out of the area further south out of the um, uh, out of the area of the convoy uh, this is a tragedy uh, but it absolutely has nothing to do with the IDF. Okay, Lieutenant Colonel Lerner, I just have a question too. I mean, did IDF forces on the scene, you know, believe that any of these individuals, these Palestinians were, you know, Hamas combatants, so to speak? Uh, and if so, what are the rules of engagement if that is operative, if that is at play here? So this is precisely when we fired those warning shots, it was precisely because there was a lot of people uh, approaching the forces, approaching the tanks, we know Hamas terrorists, they don't wear uniforms like regular military, like decent militaries. They are operating in civilian clothes. They get close to our tanks and they try and plant booby traps, explosive devices on our armored vehicles. So of course there is a constant threat, a 360 degree threat in operating in the urban area. And this indeed is a concern and this is precisely why we open fire with warning shots and limited controlled firing um, and then retreated and then we left that area and the, and the convoy continued forward uh, ramming and and running over some of the some Palestinians that caused tens of people to be killed injured wounded uh, this is the reality of this morning so um, I just want to get this straight here and clarify uh, on the IDF side they fired warning shots in the air to disperse the crowd the IDF is characterizing this somewhat as a 
crowd crush and people were trampled. Did IDF soldiers uh, at, at all, you know, fire at some of these individuals who were storming this aid convoy? No, we do not fire at the convoy. We did not attack the convoy. No, absolutely not. We fired in the air to, uh, in order to disperse the masses and then towards some people that were approaching the tank and, th uh, and then we moved out. Okay. That was a very, very close, concerning incident and a tragedy. But the mass event, the mass um, uh, uh, reality of um, casualties that, that Hamas are reporting about, uh, they have nothing to do with Israel if they even happen. Okay, also, you know, the White House said today that President Biden, he discussed uh, what the White House is calling this tragic and alarming incident with the leaders of both Egypt and Qatar, as well as ways to secure the release of these uh, hostages still being held by Hamas, more than 100 of them. Um, you know, earlier this week, President Biden had said we could possibly see a deal uh, this next Monday. Uh, and so he was somewhat backtracking on that timetable today. And other comments as well, does something like this that happened in Gaza City today, does that jeopardize a deal going forward? Uh, are you worried, or are many members of the IDF or the Israeli government worried that something like this could scuttle a deal? The IDF has three core goals in this war. To bring back the 134 hostages, Imagine their families have been torn to pieces over the last almost five months now um, to bring them back home, every last one of them, to dismantle and destroy Hamas as a governing authority, as a terrorist entity, an entity that built a terrorist army that came into our kitchens and butchered our babies in their bedrooms, and to create a new security regime, a security con condition that will be improved for both Israelis and, I would add, also for Palestinians. So we need to do everything we can in order to create the conditions to bring home hostages. And indeed, those include negotiations, but also include the option of operational activity like we did two weeks ago with our special forces and releasing um, two hostages. Um, we hope that this will not impede on that, on the negotiations, but we will push forward in order to achieve our goals and bring home the hostages once and for all. They need to be brought home. Um, the, the way and how and how long Hamas have held them now for 146 days is unacceptable in conditions that we can only be that can only be described as hell on earth or probably hell beneath earth because they're most likely in the tunnels. Yeah, you were just taking a live look there uh, in Jerusalem as well. I just want to go back to this really tragic event that happened today. If you could offer more details. Uh, as well, because there have been reports, uh, and it is true that um, skepticism should be at play when uh, anything that the Gaza Health Ministry puts out there as far as figures when it comes to those deceased. They did so very quickly, but there have been uh, reports throughout this war of Hamas kind of commandeering some of the humanitarian aid. Is that what happened today? Uh, were there any Hamas combatants in this crush of people that was trying to steal the aid from innocent Palestinian civilians. Do we know any of that? Um, the investigation is ongoing. I can't indicate okay. or I have no indications at this time that Hamas were involved. Um, but it, it may appear in late, at, at a later date. What we know is that there were a, a, a huge amount of people, as you saw on the images that we distributed, so, uh, several hundreds of people were storming the truckloads um, going north, um, basically taking everything they could grab. And this created a state of complete chaos. And from our understanding, the reality in this scenario was, um, you know, the, the deep tragedy that people have been, were, were just run over. Um, the trucks moved forward, the trucks advanced, and people were just left uh, behind, lying on the ground. And this is the, the very sad truth of the event. Um, if Hamas has been as was involved, I can't say at this time. Of course, it's always possible. We've seen in the northern Gaza Strip, even after we've um, dismantled and destroyed most of, or almost all of uh, Hamas's battalions, there are still terrorists operating in a um, uh, more guerrilla type, guerrilla warfare type action. So it's individual terrorists that are conducting uh, their activities. 
And yes, it poses a threat and Hamas is still present in Gaza and this is precisely the reason why we need to continue our operations in order to dismantle and destroy Hamas once and for all. Yeah, you know, something just lastly that we've been talking here live now from Fox about a lot with experts and uh, officials like yourself is whether or not this imminent operation in Rafa at the southernmost uh, tip of the enclave in Gaza will happen by IDF forces, you know, sometime before Ramadan. Ramadan is fastly approaching. Does anything that happened there in northern Gaza today with this uh, crush of Palestinians trying to get this aid here, does anything change that calculus? The IDF is conducting its operations um, extensively. Of course, Rafa, as we experienced uh, in the last hostage release that we conducted two weeks ago, it took place in Rafa. That is where hostages were held. Uh, our forces came under extensive fire from all directions, which implies and is which is proof to the fact that Hamas is still very, very present there, strong there, and has forces there. So, of course, we can't complete our mission without going to Rafah and dismounting, destroying Hamas operations there, and hopefully bringing home hostages there as well. Um, of course, and we are very attentive to the U.S. administration, we will evacuate um, people from that area if we operate, when we operate. We will conduct our operations in accordance to international humanitarian law based on military necessity, precaution, and proportionality. Yeah. And, and will the IDF be conducting kind of an internal review uh, of what took place there today, this, this deadly crush there in northern Gaza? Absolutely. Of course, the, we are looking in order to continue to supply humanitarian goods. We need to make sure that this doesn't happen, doesn't reoccur again. Um, you know, the people need the help. They need the humanitarian supplies. And from our perspective, we need to make sure that the supplies can get through and that the forces are not under threat because of the, the, the supplies movement, the convoy movement, but indeed that the convoys themselves do reach the, the destinations they're supposed to so that the people that are in dire need receive those, those supplies. Okay. Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner with the IDF, we do appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thank you.